First of all, what does ECG stand for? ECG stands for the electrocardiograph, which is basically an amplifier or a device that records the heart's electrical activity. First of all, we can see in the first diagram that there are the waves, the P wave, the Q, the R, the S, and lastly the T wave. Since we've spoken about the, the waves, we can talk about their segments, which are the PR segment and the ST segment, and two intervals, which are the PR interval and QT interval. Okay. Now, the P wave is the atrial depolarization or the contraction of the atriums, and the PR segment is the normal delay in the AV node. Then the QRS complex, which is the ventricular depolarization or contraction of the ventricles, and the ST segment is the period when the ventricles are depolarized. Lastly, the T wave, which is the repolarization of the ventricles. Okay, an ECG paper is divided into squares. If the paper speed is 25 millimeters per second, then your small square is 1 times 1 millimeters, or an equivalent to 0.04 seconds. So a large square consists of five small squares. 5 times 0.04 is equal to 0.2 uh, seconds. So the checklist of the ECG. First of all, we have the rhythm, whether it's regular or irregular, the rate, whether it's normal, fast, or slow, the axis, whether it's normal, right or left, um, P wave, whether it's present, absent, and the shape, the PR interval, whether it's normal, short, or prolonged, and the QRS complex, whether it's normal, which is narrow or wide, and the ST segment, whether it's normal, elevated, or depressed, and lastly, the T wave, whether it's inverted or inverted. Okay. First of all, the rhythm. We'll look at the distance between um, two separate R's. Um, you look at your ECG strip, F -E -G -E -C -G strip. If you see the R's are separate at the same distance, then you'll notice that the rhythm is regular. But if the distance isn't really equal between them, then it's an irregular rhythm. Okay, the rate. The normal heart rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. So if it's less than 60 beats per minute, it's considered bradycardia. And if it's more than 100, then it's tachycardia. Okay, how do you measure the rate if the rhythm is regular? If it's regular, you've got two methods. The first one is dividing 1,500 by the number of small boxes between two separate R's. So 1,500 divided in this example, you've got one, two, three, um, so that's 15 small boxes and one, so that's 16. 1,500 divided by 16 is 94 beats per minute. And then if you've got large boxes, you could divide 300 by the number of large boxes between the R's. So look at the example, you can divide 300 by 1, you've got 300. Divided by 2, you've got 150. By 3, you've got 100. And lastly, by 4, you've got 75. Okay, what happens if the rhythm is irregular? If it's irregular, you will need a 6 second ECG strip, which consists of 30 uh, large squares. And then you'll count the number of R's and multiply that by 10. So if you look at lead 2, uh, you'll see that you've got 12 times 10, which is 120 beats per minute. Okay, moving on to the axis. We'll pretend that my left hand is the lead one and the lead EVF is my right hand. So if um, it's facing upwards, it's positive, and it's facing downwards, it's negative. So if it's normal, you've got two positives, so they're both facing, facing upwards. And then if you've got left axial deviation, you'll have your lead one facing positive, so it's upwards, and your AVF lead facing downwards or negative, so that's left axial deviation. If you've got your lead one facing downwards and your AVF lead facing upwards, which is positive, you've got a right axial deviation. And lastly, if they're both negative, then you've got an extreme right axial deviation or it's undetermined. Okay, so a normal ECG strip, let's go through it again. You've got the rate, which is 60 to 100 beats per minute, a regular rhythm, you can see that here, they're roughly the same distance apart, a P wave, which is usual, which should be less than three small boxes, PR interval that is between three to five small boxes, QRX complex which normally is less than three small boxes, ST segment two to three small boxes, and T wave less than six small boxes, and the amplitude less than three small boxes also. Okay, atrial enlargement. You've got the right atrial hypertrophy in lead two that should look like this, and um, it's called the P pulmonal, and the left at atrial hypertrophy which should look something like this, and it's called the P mitral. Okay, now in this diagram we can see the normal QRS configuration and in V1 and V2 you'll see that the S is really deep and the R is kind of short 
and the V3 and V4, you can see that the R and S are roughly equal, and then in V5 and 6, you've got a really tall R. Okay, so the right ventricular hypertrophy, you've got a large R in V1 and 2, and you can see that here, and then you've got the left ventricular hypertrophy, which has a large S in V1 and 2, and a large R in V5 and 6, and you can see that in here. Okay, so the, in the left ventricular hypertrophy, you need an S wave at um, V2 plus the R wave at V5. You should add to a, gr a sum greater than 35 millimeters for you to call it the left ventricular hypertrophy. Thank you. Okay, I will uh, continue the second part. I will start by conduction disorder. Uh, normally, the impulse originates from the SA node, then it's go to the AV node. There is, an, uh, there is a delay in the AV node less than 0.2 second. Uh, then it will continue to the bundle of haze, then to, then to the Purkinje fibers. Uh, first degree heart block, um, if the delay in the AV node is prolonged, it takes more than its time, more than 0.2 seconds, then we have the first degree heart block. Uh, second degree heart block, uh, we have Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2. The Mobitz type 1, there is a progressive lengthening of PR interval, then failure of conduction of an atrial impulse. And here is an example of it. Mobitz type 2, there is an atrial contraction without ventricular contraction. So we have P wave without QRS complex and T wave. Third degree heart block. No conduction of impulses from atrium to ventricle at all. So there is no relationship between P waves and QRS complex. It means the atrium and ventricle contraction are not synchronized. Uh, right bundle branch block, RSR is located in lead V1 and in left, uh, left bundle branch block, letter M in lead V6. Wolf-Parkinson White syndrome. There is an abnormal conducting fibers called bu uh, bundle of Kent between atrium and ventricle without delay of AV node. So the PR interval is going to be short and it's characterized by delta wave. Uh, rhythm, we divide it into SA node rhythm, atrial rhythm, and ventricular rhythm. First, SA node rhythm, it means it originates from the SA node, so the P wave is normal, uh, the QRS complex is narrow. Uh, we divide it into sinus bradycardia, sinus tachycardia, and respiratory sinus arrhythmia. Sinus bradycardia, uh, everything is normal except the rate will be slow or less than 60 beats per minute. Sinus tachycardia, everything is normal except the rate is going to be fast or more than 100 beats per minute. Then respiratory sinus arrhythmia, it's a normal phenomena which is in inspiration the rate is increased and in expiration the rate is decrease. Okay, second rhythm is atrial rhythm. It means the impulse originates from the atrial wall. So the P wave is going to be abnormal, the QRS is still narrow. Uh, we divide it into premature atrial contractions, atrial tachycardia, atrial flutter, and atrial fibrillation. Uh, first, we have a premature atri atrial contraction. It's a, uh, it is an ectopic focus in atrium. It becomes a pacemaker for only one beat. Okay, then we have atrial tachycardia. Since it's tachycardia, the, uh, the rate is going to be fast. And the P wave have abnormal shape. Atrial flutter, uh, the rate of the atrium is, uh, will be very fast comparing to the ventricle. So uh, every two or every three or every four atrial contraction will conduct only one impulse to the ventricle. So we have here flutter waves. It's characterized by saw tooth appearance. Then we have atrial fibrillation due to multiple atrial ectopic fossae. 
uh, it has irregular rhythm with no P waves. Then we have ventricular rhythm. It's originating from the ventricular wall. So there is no P wave and the QRS complex is wide. We divide it into premature ventricular contraction, ventricular tachycardia, and ventricular fibrillation. Premature ventricular contraction, its uh, ectopic focus makes the ventricle contract premature or before its time. Uh, so in the, uh, in the PVC, there is absent, absent P wave and it's irregular when a PVC occurs and it has bizarre appearance. Ventricular tachycardia, uh, since it's a tachycardia, uh, the rate will be fast, uh, the P wave is absent, and the QRS, bizarre appearance. Torsadi D points, it's a French term, it's type from ventricular tachycardia, and it means a twisting of the point. Ventricular fibrillation, it's a serious condition uh, when there is a lacking of a visible order or organization. Then I will talk about ECG changes in coronary artery disease. ST segment depression means below base, baseline and seen in ischemia. ST elevations means above baselines seen in infarction. This is the ECG paper and uh, lead V1 and lead V2 represent the septal, lead V3 and lead V4 represent the anterior wall, lead V5, lead V6, lead 1 and lead AVL represent the lateral wall, lead 2, lead, lead 3, lead AVF represent the inferior wall. Uh, here is an example of ischemia as we see the ST depression. Uh, and here is an example of inferior MI as we see the elevation in lead 2, 3 and AV, AVF. And here is example of anterior MI as we see the ST elevation in lead V2, uh, sorry, in lead V3 and lead V4. And here is an example of lateral MI as we see the elevation in lead V5, V6, lead 1 and lead AVL. Here is the end and thank you.